Latino communities in our state. We're looking at why they are at greater risk and the organizations now that are in there trying to help. Well, here we are, final hours, final push of what has already been an unprecedented election season that seemingly has gone on without end. Nearly four million people have cast their ballot in Georgia alone, but the state is expecting many more to head to the polls tomorrow, and election officials across the country have warned with this high volume of absentee ballots, we may not have a declared winner in the presidential race tomorrow night. We have a team of reporters and anchors, producers covering how the counties are handling absentee ballots, what to do if you've been exposed to COVID but still need to vote. But first, former President Obama making a stop in Atlanta near Atlanta Fulton County Stadium, where it used to be a parking lot now. Doug Richards has more. With Democrats John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock watching from backstage, former President Obama took note of the rare chance to flip two U.S. Senate seats from Republican to Democrat. You've got the chance to flip two Senate seats? I said, well, I got to go. Obama spoke in a parking lot outside the stadium formerly known as Turner Field. At an event, Democrats opted not to publicize much to hold down the size of the crowd. Yet the area in front of the stage filled up with Democratic insiders anxious to get close to the former president who slammed Republican Senators Kelly Loeffler and David Perdue. To make sure their portfolios were protected instead of making sure you were protected, man, that's shady. Much of the crowd stuck to the drive-in format of the event, waving signs, honking horns, and hoping the message might get out to folks on the fence about voting Tuesday. Even with the restrictions, Ossoff said it can only help them. Having President Obama here is a huge boost, and his encouragement to get out and vote tomorrow is what everybody needs to hear. The answer is not to stay home, it's to turn out like never before. President Obama did not mention the Democrats running in close congressional races in the 6th and 7th congressional districts. Republicans and Democrats made their final lap through Georgia ahead of the election. Last night, both President Trump and Democratic vice presidential nominee Senator Kamala Harris of California were in Georgia. The president promising a red wave during his rally in Rome. The women of the suburbs, please vote for President Trump. So when do you see what's going to happen with the great red wave? President Trump leading the state by five points in 2016, but with polling showing a tight race between he and Joe Biden, it's clear the president not taking Georgia for granted in the red anymore. Senator Harris took some time for a one-on-one -on -one interview with 11 Alive anchor Sheba Russell during her visit to Gwinnett County yesterday. The message focused on the trust, trying to win black men here in Georgia and across the country to get them into the voting booth. I, here's the issue. The issue has to really be understanding that every vote needs to be earned. I am never going to say to anybody they're supposed to vote for us. We have to earn that vote. And that comes with having a plan, having a plan that relates to, to police reform, criminal justice reform, access to capital, health care and coverage, mental health care. And when people are informed of what we are committed to doing, I think the choice is incredibly clear. We have Sheba's full six-and-a-half-minute interview with Senator Harris on the 11 Alive YouTube page that you can check out whenever you like. According to an NBC poll, 79% of registered voters surveyed say they are very interested in the election outcome. Investigator Rebecca Lindstrom looks at what else this survey found. That has certainly led people to the polls. The Secretary of State says nearly 4 million people have already voted. That means we only need about 250,000 people to show up on Election Day to break the record for the total number of votes cast in a presidential election. According to the NBC poll, which surveyed voters in 12 potential swing states, that won't be hard to do because 27% say they plan to wait until Election Day to cast their ballot. The swing states listed alongside Georgia are Arizona, Florida, Iowa, Maine, Michigan, Minnesota, North Carolina, New Hampshire, Nevada, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. Of those states, more people in the past month believe our country is headed in the right direction, from 30% to 36% of those surveyed. But the majority of Americans, 57%, 
still believe we are on the wrong track. While 56% approve of how President Trump has handled the economy, only 42% approve of how he's handled the coronavirus, and 47% approve of his job performance overall. That's giving Joe Biden a slight advantage in the polls. 51% of those surveyed say they're voting for the former vice president, which is in line with 11 Alive's own Survey USA poll in mid-October. 49% say they also hope Democrats take control of Congress after this election. I do want to note the margin of error on the NBC poll is about 3.5%. And slightly more people surveyed consider themselves strong, moderate Democrats. So if you're already on the edge of your seat, hold on, because all the polls seem to be able to tell us is that this election is going to be close. Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger says his office prepared for crowds tomorrow after the long lines during the June primary. They requested more people to volunteer as poll workers, and Georgians answered that call. My office supplied the names of more than 52,000 Georgians who wanted to step up as poll workers. Listen to that. 50,000 Georgians answered the call to serve your local election teams. We made the call and you answered. Secretary Raffensperger says this massive response helped the state and counties achieve their goals of opening more polling locations. And he says it will help to get voters through faster on election day. Fulton County's election director expects to have all of the absentee mail-in ballots it has received so far counted by tomorrow afternoon on Election Day. We asked Reveal investigator Andy Parati to explain how this process is going to work. Over the past few weeks, this is where election workers have been processing thousands of absentee ballots in Fulton County. But if you want your vote to count tomorrow, don't put it in the mail. It's too late for that. Instead, drop it off in person. On the eve of the election, Fulton County's election workers process the remaining mail-in absentee ballots on the third floor of the State Farm Arena. Here's how it works. Workers scan each ballot into a computer system, which are saved on hard drives, not connected to the Internet. Then the hard drives are transported three miles away here to the county's election headquarters on English Street. Starting at 7 p.m. tomorrow, the ballots are then uploaded on computers and included into the county's official results. So far in Georgia, 1.2 million people have cast absentee ballots by mail. As of Monday morning, there are 262,000 outstanding ballots not yet returned. Fulton County's election director expects most of its absentee mail-in ballots will be counted early. Any of the ballots that we'd scanned probably through 2 p.m. tomorrow, uh, absentee, we'll release those at 7 p.m. Then the, the absentee team will keep working throughout the rest of the day and night. To, to keep processing everything. Not all Georgia counties are processing mail-in ballots early. They're not required to. Election workers will be back here tomorrow tabulating absentee ballots it collects today and tomorrow. Its director expects to have them all counted by 2 p.m. tomorrow. 11 Alive's voter access team will have all of that for you coming up, and we will make sure that we stay on top of it so that all of the information is at your fingertips. Governor Kemp quarantining after he was exposed to someone who tested positive for COVID. He made the announcement on Friday. The governor's staff is now telling us he will vote absentee. Some of you asked if those in quarantine could still vote in person on Election Day. Here's Joe Hankey walking us through the CDC's new guidelines. After months of saying people who are exposed to COVID-19 or test positive need to quarantine, the CDC is now saying those people can go vote in person, but safety precautions are needed. The CDC released a statement to 11 Alive reading in part, CDC's recommendations for isolating someone who has COVID-19 or quarantining someone who was in close contact with a person with COVID-19 would not preclude them from exercising their right to vote. The CDC on Sunday released guidance for voters planning to leave quarantine to vote in person, and the Georgia Department of Public Health updated its guidance today to reflect the CDC's. The CDC recommending you wear a mask, stay six feet away from others, wash or sanitize your hands before and after voting. Good advice for all voters, but you should also let poll workers know about your condition when arriving. For poll workers helping voters who've been infected or exposed, the CDC recommends 
workers be provided with PPE and training for the equipment. They also need to practice social distancing and wash or sanitize their hands frequently. Fulton County's Elections Director Rick Barron says counties are receiving more guidance from the state today, but it presents one more last second item to deal with. Challenging to try to get the word out to poll workers at the last minute and try to implement a, a procedure in which we have not prepared. We can't turn a voter away. We want everybody to have their right to come, um, cast their ballot. Erica Hamilton, director of elections for DeKalb County, says if voters are ill with COVID symptoms, they can call ahead to the county so poll workers can plan to help them cast their ballot when they arrive. If a voter waits until they're in their precinct, steps will be taken, Hamilton says, to protect other voters. Once that voter leaves, we'll wash, wipe the machine down immediately and wipe any equipment down that they've touched immediately to make sure that the next photo coming in line would not have those. And several counties have told us they're taking that same cleaning step after every single voter goes through a polling location. We also reached out to several counties today asking if someone raises their hand in line and says they are COVID-19 positive, whether that will bump them to the front of the line to limit exposure or not. But so far, we have not heard back. 11 Alive's voter access team here for you as we reach the end of this election season. If you experience problems at the polls or you just have a question, email us at whereatlspeaks at 11alive.com or text us directly at 404-885-7600. DeKalb County Police believe they've arrested a man who used a dating app to attack women. Why they think there could be more victims. Don't forget we're streaming right now on the YouTube channel. 11 Alive, you know the drill. We've been telling you about this for a year. You can, you, you know about this as much as I do. Check it out. <laughs> it's worth your time. We'll see you after the break. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe? DeKalb County police say a man accused of raping at least five women now off the streets, 18-year-old Demetrius Rome. Arrested in connection to five rapes, officers say three of the attacks happened last month at the Brook Apartments on Shalliford Road. He is accused of luring these victims through social media. Investigators say that more attacks could have happened at the complexes along Shalliford Road and I-85. They're asking any other potential victims to come forward. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's going to be another chilly night out there tonight. And, you know, we had a lot of counties this morning that were in a freeze warning. Well, overnight tonight and into tomorrow morning, it is fewer counties. We only have about three of those up in North Georgia and Fannin County, also into Union and Towns County. These are the areas that are going to be a little more likely to potentially hit 32 in the morning and maybe even as low as 28 degrees. And, of course, that is cold enough to damage any uh, or kill any sensitive vegetation. Now, 
Another thing we're going to be watching is the potential for frost overnight tonight and into tomorrow morning. There is a frost advisory for the rest of us for North Georgia, Metro Atlanta, down into central Georgia, also over into East Georgia as well. All of these counties that you see in blue, we are not going to have as much wind or really any wind around tonight with calm air and those temperatures in the 30s that is conducive for frost to develop and frost could kill sensitive outdoor vegetation if it is left uncovered. So I want you to keep that in mind tonight. Maybe put some extra mulch around some of those plants that you want to prolong. Now you can see as we go through the rest of the nighttime hours tonight at 10 o'clock, it's, it's going to be chilly. 45 degrees here, 42 in Carrollton. We will already have some 30s up in Dalton and Blairsville and then by morning with those calm winds and clear skies, I think I know this is saying 40. I really think we'll be around 37, 38 degrees in most areas around Metro Atlanta, and then we will warm up a little bit more tomorrow compared to where we were today. We were in the upper 50s today. I think we'll be in the upper 50s by noon tomorrow. Then moving into the 60s for the afternoon, 62 to maybe even 67 degrees in some spots. It all depends on that sunshine and how it warms things up during the day. So here's your election day weather outlook. We are going to see a, a chilly start to the day. If you're going to go early and if you're standing in line outside, just make sure you uh, you dress for some chilly weather. Put on some uh, maybe some layers because temperatures are going to be in the upper 30s, but it does start warming up pretty quickly. By lunchtime, we'll be around 60 degrees with plenty of sunshine and then remember the sun sets uh, before six o'clock, so it's going to be dark at seven o'clock and it's going to start cooling down. We'll be back in the 50s here at seven o'clock with clear skies. We have a, a major hurricane out there. This is a category four storm. This is Hurricane Ada. Maximum sustained winds 130 miles an hour. It's going to be moving in, we think, early tomorrow along the coast here, the northeastern coast of Nicaragua. Once it moves inland, it's going to lose its strength, become an area of low pressure, but then look what happens. It curves back out into the Caribbean. And as it does, it looks like it's going to hang out in the Caribbean for a while. So just because it's moving inland doesn't mean we're finished with that storm yet. And it's going to be one that we're going to be watching uh, for days and days once it moves back out in the Caribbean and kind of meanders there. 67 for high on uh, Tuesday. 70 Wednesday, near 70 on Thursday with 11s on the wasometer. A few more clouds Friday, then low rain chances Saturday at 20%, then a 30% chance Sunday and Monday. A little boy born with a rare condition just celebrated a big milestone. His family sharing the moment that he was fitted with new prosthetic legs to help raise awareness for his condition. Here's Tracy A. McPeer who spoke with him. My ultrasounds, um, all of my appointments were all very normal. I don't remember ever thinking, oh, I, I didn't see his feet. So when Milo Robinson was born in October of 2018, his mom Alex says they were all in shock and the room fell silent. And I just kept saying, what is wrong? What is wrong? Milo was missing both legs below his knees. It's called a congenital limb deficiency. Dr. Michael Schmitz says it's rare. Only one out of every 200,000 babies are born with it. The game plan is always the same, and it's to maximize the child's function. That included surgery at 11 months and his first prosthesis right at one year. We get lots of looks and comments and he you know kids will come up and want to touch his legs and he you know he's totally fine with that now that milo is two he was just fitted for his new prosthetic legs which will help him run around and jump and play alex says watching milo wearing them for the first time was like watching him grow an entire year older right before their eyes to us he had not grown you know from the waist down because his legs were the same. And so to see that change was, it was amazing. Dr. Schmidt says kids born with limb deficiencies don't see themselves as disabled since they don't know any other way. Their response is always watch me and see what I can do. If there's something that he can't do, just like every other kid, he just figures out, you know, his own way to do it. To help keep him on track, Milo has physical therapy once every week. Now, Milo's mom tells me that from this point on, they will likely need a new pair of prosthetic legs every six to eight months until Milo is an adult. What difference will my one vote make? It makes all the difference in the world. Carrying on a name and a legacy, how two men with a unique connection to Congressman John Lewis, the late 5th District Congressman, are continuing their fight for access to the polls. Fact is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only.
We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe? Some counties are preparing for unprecedented voter turnout. In Fulton, they've added 91 polling locations since the June primary to cut down on wait time. Still, there will be fewer polling locations open in Georgia than in some previous elections when there were fewer voters. 11 Alive's chief investigator, Brendan Keefe, digging into the fight for voting access for us. Your vote is precious, almost sacred. It is the most powerful nonviolent tool we have to create a more perfect union. In the shadow of downtown Atlanta, one man marches for freedom. Together we stand and divided we fall. A retired bishop now preaching the gospel of equal voting rights. What difference will my one vote make? It makes all the difference in the world. The bishop feeds his flock at the Vine City Community Center, but he also dishes out wisdom to the next generation. If it is to be, it is up to we, not me. Just across the street, the faces of larger-than-life civil rights leaders who help secure voting rights brick by brick. I'm standing on each, each one of those person's shoulders. And, and hundreds more, thousands more whose names that we don't even know, the things that they went through in order to be able to vote. To count the number of marbles in a bottle, ridiculous questions like how many uh, bubbles in a bar soap. That's real, Th those, are, those are not uh, stories that somebody just made up. Those things actually happened. In 1965, lining up to march. In 2020, lining up to vote. After 55 years, it's still about access to the polls. Just imagine if every time you went to the grocery store, you found the doors locked, the store closed, it had moved across town, and there were fewer locations. But we're not talking about milk and eggs. We're talking about the right to vote. And many Georgians have seen their polling places close or move across town. In fact, there are fewer polling places this year than there were in 2012, when there were millions fewer voters in Georgia. They removed machines, so the lines became longer, of course, the wait times as well. Uh, so that discouraged a lot of people, but I felt that was my duty, so I always stuck it up. This father from College Park waits longer and longer to cast his ballot, sometimes spending hours in line. Is there anything that could stop you from voting this year? No. This one vote could change the lives of our children, our, our grandchildren. My children's children's children. These two voters, separated by three decades in age, have never met, but they share a common sense of purpose. 
My name is John Lewis. My name is John Lewis. They share a name with the John Lewis, who paid for their right to vote with his own blood. And I said to all of the young people, you must get out there and push and pull and make America what America should be for all of us. Aren't we all John Lewis? Yeah, if that will to, to fight for everyone's right to vote, uh, then yes. A motivation to me uh, all of these years to, to continue. There are dozens of new polling places general election voters will have to find on November 3rd. One of them is here, John R. Lewis Elementary School in DeKalb. It's powerful. I mean, the idea of people walking under the name John Lewis and powerful. then casting a ballot uh, in a general election. John Lewis is gone, but is his work finished? No, I don't think his work is done yet. We've accomplished much, but there is much more that has to be done. Give us a vote! If you plan to vote tomorrow, check your polling location. You can do so right now. And you can do this on the Secretary of State's My Voter page. This is a little involved, so let me speak somewhat slow here. The web address is mvp.sos.ga.gov. You can enter the information in the MVP login box, and then you hit Submit. All right, so once you're in, then you're going to see four boxes, top left, tells you if your voter status is active. Top right is your polling place. The Secretary of State is warning that with so many new polling locations added, yours may have changed. You can find a link to more in-depth instructions on the 11 Alive app in the As Seen on TV section. Georgia is living up to its title as a battleground state. Next, we look at what these recent campaign stops from the candidates mean for the state, either staying red or flipping blue. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today.
President Trump, former Vice President Joe Biden, spent the last hours of the campaign on the move, visiting potential swing states. Tonight, we're joined by political analysts to help us break everything down. And we have our Republican analyst, Mike Hassinger, is here, political science professor Dr. Andre Gillespie, and constitutional attorney Paige Pate. Thanks, guys, for being here. We appreciate it. Dr. Gillespie, let's do a round robin. We'll start it with you. No filibusters here. A quick statement about where you think we are today and what we are going to look at by the time tomorrow is over. Um, well, I think Georgia is truly competitive today. It's too close to call based on the surveys. I expect that whatever the outcome is, it's going to be very close. So we're going to be looking at a smaller margin than what we saw in 2016, which was five points for Trump. Mike Hassinger, you're up. You're in the hitter's box. Give us your view about what you think we're going to see tomorrow. I, I think in Georgia, we're going to see a very, very close race that is really too close to call, uh, too close to try to predict um, or to use any of the polls as anything other than um, an indicator that we're going to be up into the wee hours of the night counting votes and seeing who's got the edge. Paige, what's your take as you have followed all of the news and you have watched the polls? Certainly, uh, give me a sense of where you believe it all is. Well, Jeff, I don't think there's any doubt that this will be a very close election in Georgia. What I am very interested in is to see what's going to happen on the legal front. We've already seen a number of core challenges, both to absentee balloting and to keeping the polls open, being allowed to accept ballots after uh, Election Day. That's been overturned in Georgia. It won't happen. But I am certain that we're going to see more litigation, not necessarily leading up till tomorrow, but perhaps after tomorrow. You know, Mike, we could take a look at the video that we're doing right now or the live shots that we're doing right now. And it would look like it's 2016, even though we have millions more casting their ballot, more people involved in the process perhaps than ever before. Yet we're looking at essentially the same of what we saw four years ago. Do you find irony in that? Uh, if you're talking about the long lines on Election Day, I don't think we're going to see quite uh, as long a lines this year as we did in 2016. Um, Republicans, as a group, tend to vote late. They're traditionalists. They're conservatives. They like to vote on Election Day. Donald Trump is counting on a massive Election Day red wave to keep him competitive in this race uh, in battlegrounds and all across the country. Um, this is not 2016 by any stretch of the imagination. The electorate is different, different demographics, and there are a whole lot more of them. Dr. Gillespie, how about President Trump's way to to uh, 278. D d do you see it as a long shot at this point, or do you see that it's still conceivable? Um, well, it's conceivable, but he has basically one narrow path, which is basically keeping his 2016 coalition together. So if that falters, and then if there's a surprise in some of the other close battleground states um, that he won in 2016, then that's going to be a problem to maintaining you know, his uh, electoral college lead. Paige, you talk about the legal issues here. Give us a sense of the legality of the vote and what happens if, say, President Trump does not accept what has happened. I mean, what, what do the legal ramifications look at, the Supreme Court, all of these kinds of moving parts? Give us an overview. I know that's a very complicated question, but try to give me, give me some cliff notes on this, if you would. Well, I mean, Jeff, first of all, it is an incredibly complicated question, but just looking at it from, you know, kind of a 2,000-foot overview, a number of different things could happen. I think the easiest thing and certainly the best thing uh, for the election lawyers who are looking at this is a clear victory for one candidate over the other, such that the results can be certified, they won't be challenged, uh, the Electoral College can go ahead and select a president, and that president can take office in January. But so many things could happen. Uh, there could be questions about absentee ballots being counted because they're received after uh, 7 o'clock tomorrow. In Georgia, they're not supposed to be counted. In other states, they can be. In some, they can't. So it's inconsistent across the country. And all you need for trouble is to have the president say, I don't agree with the results. I don't like what I'm seeing. It's time to end this now. If that comes from the White House tomorrow evening at some point and there's still ballots that have yet to be counted, we may be in trouble. Dr. Gillespie, this is a referendum on Donald Trump more than it is issues. It, it is a curious election in that sense where it's so divisive, 
you would accept <coughs> and, and expect so many different, you know, issues at play, but the reality is it's a referendum on whether you like the president or you don't. Well, I think it's a little bit more than whether or not you personally like the president, and I think issues are tied into this. People are going to look at how he's handled the economy or how he has handled COVID-19 or how he has handled race relations or other issues that are important to them. So you will see they, uh, their attitudes about these issues and the Trump administration response to that being factored into one, their decision to turn out and vote and their decision in terms of who they're going to support in this election. Mike, the Republicans are saying in mass that you can't believe the polls, that uh, the national media does not give a true reflection of the way the country is right now in terms of those who vote on the right. Do you think that's a fair analysis? And do you believe the polls as we sit here the night before? Oh, I do believe the polls. I just don't believe that they're predictive. I believe that they're probabilistic. Uh, and I think that's a mistake that a lot of people make with uh, trying to interpret polls. Uh, somebody who is, uh, our Senate election is too close to call. Um, the uh, Vice President Biden looks favored in most of the battleground states by a point or two, some within the margin of error. Um, you know, overall, I think President Trump has a one in four chance of being reelected. Um, those aren't good odds, but they are indeed odds. Paige, Paige, do you, do you think that we are going to see, if Joe Biden wins, do you think that we are going to see a, a, a packing of the court? Do you think that we are going to see that as far as the U.S. Supreme Court goes? Well, Jeff, I suppose that's possible. I think uh, Vice President Biden at this point has committed to uh, appointing a task force, a committee to look into perhaps not just that, but, but other potential reforms with the Supreme Court. Uh, maybe uh, term limits is a possibility, uh, maybe affecting uh, one part of their jurisdiction. A lot of what the Supreme Court does today is not written in the Constitution. It has developed over the last uh, couple of hundred years the way the court has accepted cases and basically define their jurisdiction. So I know the vice president, if he is elected, is going to look into it, but I don't think the issue of whether or not there are going to be additional justices uh, is necessarily on his agenda at this point. Dr. Gillespie, we're going to hear a lot 24 hours from now. We are going to hear so much about the Electoral College. Everyone is going to become an expert on it. Give me your view of the Electoral College here in 2020. and. Uh, if you believe that it needs to be sort of uh, reassembled or the arguments that are opposed to it, give me your take from uh, a, a sort of academia view of the Electoral College in the United States at this point. Sure. I mean, the problem with the Electoral College is twofold. So one, if we look back at the historical record, the noted political scientist Robert Dahl noted that it was a bit of an afterthought. Um, and so it's institutionally problematic in part because the framers didn't quite think it through. Um, but the problem from an institutional standpoint now is that uh, completely revamping or getting rid of the Electoral College would require a constitutional amendment and small states have no interest in ratifying the elimination of the Electoral College. So um, what uh, we could do is figure out other ways. So there's a proposal on the table to tie electoral college votes to the overall popular vote. And if a majority of states sign on to that, um, enough to get to 270 electoral college votes, there's some states that have already pledged that they would institute that. The problem that we have with the legitimacy of the electoral college is that it is supposed to correlate with the popular vote. And the fact that there are two elections in the last 20 years and possibly a third coming up tomorrow um, where the, the popular vote winner didn't actually correspond to the electoral college winner is something that makes it look problematic today. Mike, does David Perdue survive tomorrow and, and how does the Leffler doug Collins matchup look as far as the Republican go, do you think? Jeff, how many coins do you have in your pocket? <laughs> and flip them all and uh, call heads or tails. I work here. I don't have any I coins. Think, I afraid. think David Perdue. <laughs> I, I think David Perdue has a slight edge, a very slight edge going into tomorrow. Uh, I think that uh, Kelly Loeffler has this, uh, a better edge than does Doug Collins of making the runoff with uh, uh, Reverend Raphael Warnock. Um, but it is entirely possible that we'll have two senatorial runoffs in Georgia, which is just going to ruin Christmas. 
Mike, Paige, Dr. Gillespie, guys, I really appreciate it. We'll have you up again here uh, at about 9.30 here on the Big 36. So uh, thanks for being with us. We look forward to seeing you again within uh, the hour. Thanks so much. What issues matter the most to you as we head into Election Day? Let us know by texting the number on your screen, 404-885-7600. Check out our resource guide on 11alive.com slash vote. Coming up, the president's response to supporters calling on him to fire the nation's top infectious disease expert. Stay with us. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Voters say the economy and the pandemic are top of mind, and economists say those two issues go hand in hand. Here's Jennifer Bellamy to explain. The way to improve the economy and to improve worker well-being is to end the pandemic. Emory Professor of Economics Carolyn Foline says we've already seen a partial rebound from a low point early in the pandemic. There's been some improvement in unemployment numbers, but with tens of thousands still filing first-time claims in Georgia, she says it's not enough, and solving the problem of the pandemic is key. I think when looking forward, you know, into the next few months and to the next administration, whichever administration is going to do the better job ending the pandemic, um, will improve the economy faster. While many states like Georgia have been reopened for months now, Foley says businesses partially reopening still means reductions in the economy. If we can't get people safely back to in-person activities, then we can't operate the economy at, you know, 
full scale. In other words, partial reopenings aren't enough to regain lost ground. Foleen says we need students safely back in schools and people safely back at work. Two big factors that will lead to secondary businesses and other in-person services being able to follow suit. She says we already know there's going to be a long-term impact, so the longer this goes on, the more serious the ramifications. Not being able to pay your mortgage, not being able to pay rent. So those kinds of problems tend to snowball the longer it goes on. And so the deeper we get into a recession. Um, so it kind of builds in a negative cycle. President Trump dropping hints about the future of the nation's top infectious disease expert. During a campaign stop in Florida last night, the crowd was chanting fire Fauci, a reference to Dr. Anthony Fauci. The president replied, let me wait until a little bit after the election, then claimed Dr. Fauci has been wrong a lot. Dr. Fauci has grown more outspoken recently about the president's handling of the coronavirus pandemic. Well, we had a rather cool day out there today, and it was a chilly start in the morning. We started off at 38 degrees this morning for our low, and the average low for this time of year is 49. So we were about 11 degrees below average this morning. Wasn't a record, though. The record is 26. That was set in 1954. Our high temperature today, 59 degrees. We didn't even hit 60 this afternoon, uh, and our average for this time of year is 68. So that, again, is a temperature that is well below the average. Now, no rain. Uh, at, at Hartsfield Jackson, we have plenty of clear skies, no rain in the area at all, and our surplus is just under 20 inches above where we should be in rainfall for the year. Now, we mentioned earlier we have a freeze warning in effect for far north Georgia in Fannin County, also into Union and Towns County. The rest of us the, in the counties colored in blue, that's where we have a frost advisory in effect. We won't see any wind around tonight. It is going to be cold as those temperatures dip down into the uh, uh, mid and upper 30s, and those are the conditions potentially to give us some frost developing. In fact, here are the required conditions needed for frost. Temperatures near or, or, or below freezing at 32 to 36 and 37 degrees, a clear sky and calm air, not really much wind. And so those are the required conditions. This is what we're expecting. Temperatures down to 37, clear skies, calm air. That is conducive for frost to develop. Now we're on the upper end of that range though for frost. Uh, so just know that it'll be patchy. I don't think it's going to be widespread, but that frost could damage or kill any uh, plants uh, that are susceptible to cold air. So uh, I've had a lot of people ask me, wait a minute, it's going to be above freezing, but we could still have pieces of ice uh, frost developing. Well, yes, most thermometers are four to six uh, uh, inches uh, or four to six feet above the ground. Um, and so they measure the temperature above the ground and at the surface it can be a little bit cooler thanks to radiational cooling out there. We can have that cooler at the surface and that's where why you can see some of those little particles of ice developing on grass or on uh, flower petals or, or leaves or anything like that. So watch tonight. We're going down through the 40s after midnight we will be in the 30s and then in the morning we'll drop down to around 37 degrees for a low and then coming back up to 40 by 8 o'clock in the afternoon. So for your election day vote, a polls open at 7 in the morning. It's going to be chilly in the 30s by then, but it's going to start warming up quickly. I do think we'll see some 60s lunchtime and after, and then when the poll, polls close at 7, it'll be moving back down into 50s, so cooling down again. So plenty of sunshine, though, no, no rain around. In fact, we're going to want the 10 on the wasometer here Tuesday, 11s on Wednesday and Thursday, as the mornings are still going to be chilly, but just not as cold. And then a few more clouds on Friday. A low rain chance is Saturday at 20%. We go up to 30% chance for showers on Sunday and Monday. High Temperatures, though, still above the average once we get into the weekend and beginning of next week with our highs in the lower 70s. Racial and ethnic minority groups have been disproportionately hit by COVID. What one group is doing for a Georgia Latino community that's struggling to find help. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. 
Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. As COVID cases continue to rise, the impact on racial and ethnic minority groups is of growing concern. 11 Alive's Paola Soro explains why many Latinos in Georgia are struggling to get the necessary help. It's a disease that really like destroys your body and even after you, to, you recover, your body's never really the same. 25-year-old Pedro Viloria saw this firsthand when his Venezuelan parents who were in their late 40s and early 50s and his roommate tested positive for COVID-19. Most Latinos families live very close together, a lot of us in one place, mostly with our elderly. Living in close quarters is one factor the CDC says disproportionately affects Latinos more than other groups. Many Hispanics actually have additional chronic conditions, um, more likely to have diabetes, heart disease, and so on. And that in itself would increase the risk of uh, complications from COVID. Dr. Jose Cordero with the University of Georgia says it also has to do with the fact that a lot of Latinos have low income. They are essential workers and a lot of them don't have the proper access to health care. There being a, a great expansion of telehealth, but for that you need to have the, the communications, you have to have your, your computer and uh, that's another area where there are limitations for uh, Hispanics in the Atlanta area. In Gwinnett County, where Latinos make up almost 22% of the population, they account for about 29% of COVID-19 cases. We know that, that in Georgia, nearly 20% of pregnant women are not covered. According to the CDC, Latinas are the largest group of pregnant women with COVID-19 in the U.S. Of the almost 35,000 pregnant women the CDC collected data from, 9,636 are Latinas. We've just kind of been really, really afraid. Um, to exist, to go out, to do anything. That fear is what drives Viloria to help his neighbors through the Latino Community Fund. The organization launched a financial assistance program giving $500 to $1,000 to those who have been affected by the virus, who aren't fluent in English, don't receive federal help, or those who are essential workers like many farmers in South Georgia. And we're seeing a very disproportionate effect on these communities. So far, the fund has handed out more than $1 million and plans to continue the work. Coming up next, voting with COVID, the CDC offering new guidelines for how you can still vote in person, even if you've been exposed to the virus and are under quarantine. Of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today.
let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 1105 News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. this Monday, how is Georgia going to slow down Florida's prolific offense? That is a problem Kirby Smart is going to have to figure out this week. It becomes even more difficult when you consider that UGA will be doing it without a number of key defenders who are banged up. I don't know how it's going to affect things because a lot of it depends on you know, what we're having to defend. Uh, with Florida, they've got a very uh, versatile attack. You know, they can be uh, many forms of offense uh, in terms of vertical passing game, screen passing game, Darius Tony run game. They got good backs, thick, heavy backs that run the botch and a big offensive line to do it with. All right, following the brawl in Saturday's Florida Missouri game, the SEC announced punishments. Florida head coach Dan Mullen, who's almost 50 years of age, gets a reprimand and was fined $25,000. He makes $6.1 million that we know of, probably makes more than that. What is $25,000 to him? That's, that's like lunch money at Bones or something, right? Gators defensive lineman Zach Carter and linebacker Antoine Powell will be suspended for the first half of Saturday's game in Jacksonville. SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey released a statement which said in part, running onto the field to confront a game official, the gathering of teams in an on-field confrontation, and student athletes throwing punches are all disappointing at any time, but even more so as we work to support healthy competition during the pandemic. Noble words for an event that was not so noble. Former UGA receiver Javon Wims of the Bears has been suspended for two games after punching Saints defensive back Chauncey Gardner Johnson. Wow. Wims eligible to return to the active roster after the Bears' Week 10 game against the Vikings. A lot of football players on edge and one almost 50 year old coach. Had nothing to do with that. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. All right, that's where we are right now, folks. Just hours away from Election Day 2020, what Georgians can expect tomorrow from a political season like none other. You can all have faith in the outcome. State election officials urging Georgia voters to trust the system, the steps they're taking to make sure your vote actually counts. It's less than 24 hours until Election Day. 
And much like this entire year, it promises to be different from any that we have ever anticipated. The changes and the chances are high that we will go to bed tomorrow night without knowing who our next president is going to be. And in some, in some of the Georgia's highest profile races as well. According to the Secretary of State's office, as of this morning, 55% of all active voters in Georgia have already cast their ballots. That's nearly 4 million votes and more than 2.7 million chose early in person voting and more than 1.2 million absentee ballots have already been accepted. So we're digging into the different election angles for you tonight, folks, from what the presidential campaigns are doing today to report of possible voter intimidation. Our team coverage begins with the state's record number of absentee ballots. County election officials are making their last minute preparations to count the surge in ballots received by mail. Reveal investigator Andy Parati explains how the process will work in Fulton County. This is where Fulton County election workers are preparing the voting machines to be used in tomorrow's election and where the final ballots in the county will be counted. But its absentee ballots are being processed three miles away. Inside the State Farm Arena on Monday, Fulton County election workers opened the remaining absentee ballots ahead of Election Day. They're not counting them just yet. Here's how it will work. Workers scan each ballot into a computer system, which are saved on hard drives not connected to the Internet. Then the hard drives are transported three miles away here to the county's election headquarters on English Street. Starting at 7 p.m. tomorrow, the ballots are then uploaded on computers and included into the county's official results. So far in Georgia, 1.2 million people have cast absentee mail-in ballots. As of Monday, there are 262,000 outstanding ballots not yet returned. State election officials say if you still have one of your mail-in ballots, do not put it in the mail. It is too late for that. Instead, drop it off in person using one of these ballot drop boxes. There are 37 of them in Fulton County. And, you know, we have heard from many voters, folks like you, concerned about delays getting their mail-in ballots. So if you apply for an absentee ballot but did not already mail it in, you need to drop it off in one of the official drop boxes in your county. So check with your local election official offices for a location. And it's too late to try to mail it in now. You already missed that deadline. And if you did not receive your absentee ballot, you may still be able to vote in person by canceling your ballot. You're going to find a lot more information on our website at 11alive.com or the 11alive app. Check the special voter resources section. And while there could be long lines and wait times tomorrow, election officials say there should be no intimidation at all. Everyone has the right to vote without feeling scared on Election Day. Kaylin Ross explains why. It's a felony in Georgia to try and intimidate a voter on Election Day, and it's against federal law. But political analysts say with how nasty this campaign cycle has become, they're worried it could spill over into the polls. We are concerned that people may get out of hand at the polling places. Attorney Paige Pate says everyone should understand their rights when they show up to vote on Election Day. Here is what the law says. You cannot intimidate anyone who is in line to vote, who is going to vote, or who is on their way to a voting place. With negative ads and divisive rhetoric ramping up on both sides, attorney Chinway Foster says she understands why voters would feel uncomfortable, but they shouldn't feel scared. Uncomfortable is different than being intimidated. I would say still go vote. Um, hopefully there are no issues. But if you get to the polling locations and you feel intimidated, you definitely have rights. People campaigning for a specific candidate have to stay 150 feet back from the polling location. Only police officers are allowed to carry guns inside the precinct. And anyone there in an official capacity must be registered with the county's election office. President Trump had called for an army of people to watch the polls on Election Day. I'm you go urging first. my supporters to go into the polls and watch very carefully. I think that it definitely breeds fear, and I can see why a lot of people are uncomfortable. Pate says there is a process for people who want to observe the election. So people can't just drive to the poll and say, I'm here to be a poll watcher. I'm going to see what's happening. That doesn't work, and that's not allowed under Georgia law. Page and Foster say if you feel intimidated on Election Day, report the behavior immediately to the poll supervisor. And if you're scared, call 911. And I have a feeling there are going to be a lot of active law enforcement uh, officers out in Georgia tomorrow trying to maintain order and make sure this election is done lawfully. 
and a reminder that you can't wear anything with campaign material on it to a polling place. That includes shirts, hats, and in the time of COVID, even face masks with political messages are banned. You know, uh, Fair Fight, the voting rights organization Stacey Abrams started, says that it has been alerted of some voter intimidation this election cycle. 11 Alive Shore Preheim had a chance to speak with her about it. We do know in South Georgia there were some reports of voter intimidation, and we know that there were reports of militias this weekend, but the reality is that should not prevent a single person from voting. We are paying attention. We are going to be well resourced to support voters, and we hope that no voter decides to stay home because they're afraid. Have you seen more intimidation this election than in ones prior? I would say that the most uh, malicious bad actor that we have seen has been misinformation. The misinformation about the safety of voting by mail, misinformation about how to go about participating in our election. You know, Abrams says that the most important thing tomorrow is that people stay in line and everyone who is eligible to cast their ballots to stay in line to cast those ballots. Fair Fight will have poll observers across Georgia to help voters with those resources. And you can watch more of Cheryl Preheim's conversation with Abrams on the 11 Alive YouTube channel. 11 Alive is committed to bringing you accurate information throughout this election process. If you have a question for our voter access team, just email us at whereatlspeaks at 11alive.com or text us to the number on your screen, 404-885-7600. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers. I'm with you on TV right now and with about 500 people on Facebook Live. That's why my phone is here. Uh, we've been talking about this major hurricane that is down in the Caribbean, uh, Hurricane Ada. That's almost a Category 5 storm. I'll talk more with you about that in just a little bit. But we're also talking about the really cold air that's in place out there right now. You know, we have a freeze warning in effect uh, for parts of North Georgia. It does not include us here in Atlanta. It's really only for three counties up in North Georgia for Fannie. County, Union County, and Towns County. Uh, temperatures there are going to be close to freezing in the morning, and there may even be some spots where it's below freezing and maybe even as low as 28 degrees. And that, of course, would be cold enough to damage or kill uh, some tender vegetation that's not protected. There's another advisory that does affect all of us, and that's a frost advisory that includes the rest of North Georgia here into Metro Atlanta, over on the east side, also down to the south toward Macon, over toward Augusta as well. It's in these areas where we're going to see temperatures that'll be in the low and mid and even some upper 30s. But with calm air and no wind, it is possible that we could see some frost developing. I don't think it's going to be widespread. It's just going to be patchy, but any frost that develops could damage or even kill sensitive outdoor vegetation if that is left uncovered. So if you have time tonight and want to get outside, maybe put some mulch around some of those plants that you didn't bring in last night or that you didn't cover up last night when it was so cold just to protect them from the frost that we have in our area. Uh, take a look at the bigger picture and you can kind of see this a little bit better here. There's just the difference in those colors of the freeze warning up in North Georgia and the frost advisory for the rest of us. Stay with us. I'm going to walk you through those temperatures hour by hour in just a few minutes. All right, Chris, thanks a lot. Presidential candidates Joe Biden and Donald Trump spent the final hours before Election Day on the road, both hoping to drum up some support in vital swing states, including right here in Georgia. It's a deep swamp, but we're winning, and I'll tell you what, we're, we're, we're going to win. I mean, I wish they didn't delay the whole deal, but maybe we can win by enough. They can call it on Tuesday night. President Trump firing up some of those supporters in Rome, Georgia last night renewing his promise four years ago to drain the political swamp. Today, he continues his campaign world win with stops in North Carolina, Pennsylvania, and Michigan. What happens tomorrow is going to determine what this country looks like for a couple of generations. And that's not a joke. I really genuinely believe that. Meanwhile, Democratic challenger Joe Biden focusing his final efforts on Pennsylvania voters with three events in his home state after starting the day with a rally in Cleveland, Ohio. Today, former President Barack Obama led a noisy election eve rally near downtown Atlanta, stumping on behalf of Democrats who think that they can win the state for Joe Biden's presidential campaign and Georgia's Senate races. 11 Alive's Doug Richards has more. Democrats said it may be an indicator of how close they are to flipping this Republican-led state by luring former President Obama here to talk up the Democratic candidates in two U.S. Senate races. The former president spoke in a parking lot near the stadium we used to call Turner Field. He stumped for his former vice president, Joe Biden, but he spent the most time 
talking about Georgia's two U.S. Senate races, the seats now held by Republicans David Perdue and Kelly Loeffler. As he spoke, Democrats John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock watched backstage, the Democrats who aimed to unseat Perdue and Loeffler. Georgia, something got to go. It's either your senators or your health care. Polls indicate both Republican senators may face trouble from Georgia voters on Tuesday. The state last elected a Democrat to the Senate 20 years ago. All eyes are on the election, but we're also smack dab in the middle of a pandemic. So how do people in quarantine cast their ballots? We'll explain next. The National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? Welcome back, everyone. Governor Brian Kemp's staff tells 11 Alive that he plans to vote absentee for the presidential election after he was exposed to COVID-19, leading him to quarantine. But the CDC says it is possible to still vote in person if you have been exposed. 11 Alive's Joe Hankey walks us through the new guidelines. The coronavirus should not limit someone's right to vote on Election Day. That is the message from the CDC tonight after updating its guidelines for the virus on Sunday. The CDC, though, urging those who are leaving quarantine to vote to follow all of the familiar COVID-19 best practices. For voters who have symptoms or have been exposed to the virus, wear a mask, social distance, wash and sanitize your hands frequently. And one extra step, though, let poll workers know you've been exposed so they can assist you and protect other voters. For poll workers helping COVID-19 positive voters or those leaving quarantine to vote, the CDC recommends poll workers be provided with PPE and instructions on how to properly use it, practice social distancing, and frequently wash or sanitize their hands. The CDC in a statement telling 11 Alive if someone is quarantining because of an exposure to the virus or is positive, COVID-19 would not preclude them from exercising their right to vote. In DeKalb County, Erica Hamilton, the county elections director, says if a voter tells poll workers they are COVID-19 positive or had a known exposure, steps will be taken to keep other voters safe. Once that voter leaves, we'll wash the wiping machine down immediately and wipe any equipment down that they've touched immediately. Hamilton says voters can also call ahead to alert poll workers so they can help them avoid exposing any other voters. As COVID-19 cases continue to rise, the impact on racial and ethnic minority groups is very concerning in our area. Level allies Paolo uh, Suro explains why many Latinos in Georgia are struggling to get that necessary help. It, it's a disease that really like destroys your body and even after you, to, you recover, your body's never really the same. 25 year old Pedro Viloria saw this firsthand when his Venezuelan parents who were in their late 40s and early 50s and his roommate tested positive for COVID-19. Most Latinos families live very close together. A lot of us in one place, mostly with our elderly. Living in close quarters is one factor the CDC says disproportionately affects Latinos more than other groups. Many Hispanics actually have additional chronic conditions, um, more likely to have diabetes, heart disease and so on. And then in itself would increase the risk 
of uh, complications from COVID. Dr. Jose Cordero with the University of Georgia says it also has to do with the fact that a lot of Latinos have low income. They are essential workers and a lot of them don't have the proper access to health care. There being a, a great expansion of telehealth, but for that you need to have the, the communications, you have to have your, your computer and uh, that's another area where there are limitations for uh, Hispanics in the Atlanta area. In Gwinnett County, where Latinos make up almost 22% of the population, they account for about 29% of COVID-19 cases. We know that, that in Georgia, nearly 20% of pregnant women are not covered. According to the CDC, Latinas are the largest group of pregnant women with COVID-19 in the U.S. Of the almost 35,000 pregnant women the CDC collected data from, 9,636 are Latinas. We've just kind of been really, really afraid. Um, to exist, to go out, to do anything. That fear is what drives Viloria to help his neighbors through the Latino Community Fund. The organization launched a financial assistance program giving $500 to $1,000 to those who have been affected by the virus, who aren't fluent in English, don't receive federal help, or those who are essential workers like many farmers in South Georgia. And we're seeing a very disproportionate effect on these communities. So far, the fund has handed out more than $1 million and plans to continue the work. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Tracker. Still talking to about almost 300 people on Facebook Live right now. A lot of people are really engaged uh, talking with me tonight about our cold air, also about the uh, hurricane that is down in the uh, Caribbean. I'm going to show all of that to you right now. Let's start, as we mentioned a little while ago, freeze warning in effect for areas of North Georgia here for Fannin County, also into Union County and Towns County. Uh, temperatures there could be 28 to 32 degrees in the morning. That, of course, can damage uh, some plants. Also, we have the frost advisory in effect for our area here. As we mentioned earlier, uh, not as much wind out there tonight. So that's what saved us last night and this morning from for not getting any frost uh, because the wind inhibits frost formation. But tonight the air is calm, so we're we may see some frost developing. I don't think it'll be widespread, just kind of patchy. And again, frost could kill sensitive or outdoor vegetation if it is left uncovered. Let me um, show you what we're watching out there right now. This is a live look at our tower cam in Blue Ridge. This is in one of the areas that's under a freeze warning as well as that frost advisory. And you know, it just looks kind of dark up there right now. It's kind of hard to tell whether or not it looks cold or not. Uh, but those trees right in front of the train, they have lost their leaves. We've been watching those trees and all the nice colors there, but the leaves are gone off of that right now with all the beautiful color. Let's take a look at temperatures around North Georgia right now. Here in town, we are in the 40s. A few folks on Facebook Live have reported temperatures that are falling into the 30s already. We're seeing some of that in Peachtree City, LaGrange and Carrollton with temperatures in the southwest side in the 30s. Northwest Georgia, you're in the 30s at 39 in Rome. 37 in Dalton, 35 in Blairsville, elsewhere more of those mid 40s that we see around. Now through the overnight, it's going to be cooling even more. By tomorrow morning, we uh, move down into those 30s. I do think that we'll bottom out around 37, 38 degrees in the morning. That's going to be very chilly, not much of a wind either. And that's why we might see a little bit of that frost. And by 8 o'clock, we're back up to 41 degrees. So if you're going to be headed out early in the morning to vote when the polls open at 7 o'clock, Temperatures are going to be kind of chilly. If you be prepared, if you have to wait in line outside, uh, you know, bring your jacket, your hat, and gloves maybe because it's going to be pretty chilly to start off at 38. But we warm up pretty quickly. I do think that by lunchtime or after lunch, temperatures will be into those lower 60s. And then as the polls close at 7 o'clock, we're back to 55. Remember, the sun sets around 543 tomorrow, so it's going to be getting dark and then it gets colder again before those polls close. We're going to go with a 10 on the wisometer tomorrow, a low of 37 and a high of 67. Here is what we're watching with Ada. This is a major hurricane just shy of category five strength. Just look at that eye right there and it is moving very slowly closer to the coast of Nicaragua. Uh, we do think it'll make landfall early in the morning here. It's a category four right now. Most likely it'll be a category four at landfall. And then when it moves inland and dies out, still don't let your guard down because this storm is going to go back out over the Caribbean 
and then just kind of meander there for a while. It is too early to tell where this is going to go after that, but we will be watching it very closely for you. So here's that seven day outlook. Uh, temperatures in the 60s tomorrow, warmer tomorrow than it was today. A lot of sunshine. Look at that. No rain over the next few days where it stays dry through the end of the week. We warm up a little bit in the mornings, a little bit milder with temperatures in the 40s and then highs in the upper 60s to the lower 70s. A low rain chance Saturday at 20%, 30% chance for showers on Sunday and Monday. Election Day looks great. Thanks, Chris. You know, music can take you back to a time or maybe a feeling and can also move you forward and help you to heal. That's the experience of a 15 year old boy from Barrow County. Music has been medicine to her, actually. Fight to survive. Cheryl Preheim has that story. Jocelyn couldn't have imagined what 15 would bring. She was walking in her neighborhood when two dogs viciously attacked her. She was in critical condition. She spent three months at Children's at Eggleston, endured nearly 20 surgeries to repair the damage to her throat, face, and scalp. Very critical injury. And while she worked to learn to talk again, creating music gave her a way to express herself. It brought unexpected joy. Any baby step in the right direction was something to smile about and something that she could regain control of again. Callie Fox is a music therapist. Uh, 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 music helps healing. You've seen that. I think just the empowerment that she had and the joy that you could really see in her eyes from making music and having something to have control of was just phenomenal. A surprise meant a lot. Her own guitar from Gibson Gives. A gift to carry her to new places. Continue for her at home. And help in the healing left to do. Straight ahead, an ode to joy. When the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra tapped the local music community for an online special, they found their cup running over. What they plan to do with hundreds of responses. <laughs> Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. With symphony halls empty and concerts on hold, the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra has, has taken its music to the internet and outdoors. It's the newest effort to bring music into the lives of other people. It's called the Greater Atlanta Play Along. Bill Liss and photojournalist Stephen Boise takes us there. <laughs> 
When we think of great moments in Atlanta, we think Olympics, and we can remember one of the most recognizable themes, Ode to Joy. It was taken from Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, and that memory sparked an idea with the Atlanta Symphony. Tap into the musical talent in the community, and that's exactly what the orchestra did. They got the word out and asked for audition tapes to put together a special video montage performing Ode to Joy. Whatever instrument you can play, it's, it counts and you should send it in. We, at one point, we were thinking maybe if we got 30 to 50, we were like, that would be something we could work with. But the word spread like wildfire. And before long, KC Commander, who heads the orchestra's digital content, was in for quite a surprise. We did not think we were going to get past 100 or 200, let alone almost 800. Whether you were a beginner, uh, intermediate, or if you were a pro, you could still be a part of the project. And Jerry Ho, the ASO's assistant conductor and music director of the youth orchestra, the project reaffirmed his belief in the power of music, especially during this pandemic. Music is a unifier. It's something that brings us all together. And it is time that it's so hard to make connections simply because of all the distancing and all the technology that we're having to use to keep everyone safe. We can use music as a way to bring everyone together. And the proof of that was in the 780 audition tapes that flooded the symphony. There were no barriers on skill levels or instruments played. And the variety went all the way from traditional to inventive. And there's eight-year-old Abby Winger, who's been playing violin since she's been four years old. Now, I like to just play at home, and sometimes um, I go to my, um, t my violin teacher. And there'll be bows all around when the video is presented on the Atlanta Symphony website between Thanksgiving and Christmas. But if you didn't make the final cut, no worries. The Atlanta Symphony plans to do a series of videos in 2021, which will show many of the 780 people who sent in the audition tapes. Georgia is living up to its new title as a battleground state. Next, we're going to look at what the recent campaign stops from the candidates mean for our state, either staying red or turning blue. Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. 
There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage. President Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden spent the last hours of the campaign on the move visiting potential swing states. Tonight, we're joined by political analysts to help us break everything down. Republican analyst Mike Assinger, political science professor Dr. Andra Gillespie, and constitutional attorney Paige Pate. Thanks, guys. We appreciate you being with us tonight. Dr. Gillespie, here we are, election eve. What's going through your head tonight? How are you approaching this? How do you view what will transpire in the day and days ahead. Well, I, I care about turnout, so I want to see how many people turn out tomorrow and how much um, of a record-breaking turnout we have. I care about the closeness of the race here in Georgia, so I ultimately want to see who wins and by how much. I care about the down-ballot effects of President Trump on uh, Senator Perdue um, and on uh, the fortunes of Kelly Loeffler, Senator Kelly Loeffler and, and Congressman Doug Collins. Um, I, I'm paying attention to the state legislative races, uh, which ones will uh, flip, as Democrats are hoping. Um, there's just lots to watch. And, of course, nationally, we're looking at whether or not uh, uh, Joe Biden can uh, take the blue wall back or whether or not there are going to be surprises in places that Donald Trump carried comfortably in 2016. Paige, what are you thinking about tonight from a legal standpoint? Well, Jeff, I'm hoping we don't have any major problems. I mean, I think the most important thing that America is expecting from this election is that our democracy is in one piece and that we're able to get through this, whether there's a transition in power or not, without any major challenges to the institutions that we have relied on for, for so many hundred of years to enable us to elect a president despite our disagreement. So we're going to be looking, number one, to make sure all of the votes are counted. That means all of the votes are counted. So if absentee ballots may take some time to be counted, certainly here in Georgia and in other states, we need to be patient with that process because everyone has a vote and that vote should count. Mike, as a Republican and as someone who has made his adult living in politics, What's your take on this tonight? I mean, this is unlike anything that we have ever experienced. I posted a, a picture on my Facebook page uh, about an hour ago about boarding up some chops in Lenox. And I, I have about 12,000 views. And it, I mean, there's so much hate on it that I'm thinking about deleting it. I mean, this is pretty extraordinary. It's something of which we have never seen. Well, we've never seen negative partisanship quite affect the country uh, as much as it has. Uh, it seems as though uh, voters are animated to come out and motivated to turn out and show up and to vote, really not so much because they love Joe Biden, but because they hate Donald Trump. Or, on the other hand, the, the Republican Trump supporters are diehard fanatically in favor of uh, President Trump. And it seems to have affected social interactions, uh, family relationships, and it's it's poisoned anything. You can point to the, the COVID pandemic and see how it has been politicized. The very act of wearing a mask or not wearing a mask has been politicized. Um, how we got to this point is beyond my uh, expertise or experience as a political consultant. Dr. Gillespie, much has been said over the past decade about Georgia finally turning blue. Uh, you know, that was a major theme in 2010 in the gubernatorial a battle between Governor Deal and former Governor Barnes. It did not come to pass. 
Is this going to be the year in your estimation that it does happen? <clears throat> I don't know that. The polls are too close to say that. But what we do see happening is that the margins are getting increasingly narrow. So Democrats are becoming more competitive in the state. They've certainly moved the state from being ruby red to pink, and I would say purple at this point. And I'd say it's a matter of when, not if, a Democrat wins a statewide contest in Georgia. Do you think John Ossoff is going to upset David Perdue? Um, I think that uh, that Senate race is largely going to be tied to how President Trump does in the state. So if President Trump wins the state, particularly if he gets above 50 percent, I suspect that there's going to be a really strong correlation between support um, for President Trump and support for Senator Perdue. So I think we really do have to wait uh, to see what happens. I mean, I think, you know, of course, the big wild card in the race is Shane Hazel and whether or not he pulls off enough votes to be able to force a runoff. Paige Pate, you're an attorney. Give me your view of, of this election and where America is from the standpoint of the rule of law and the concern that you're seeing and feeling uh, as an attorney and, and where we are politically tonight. Well, I, mean, I think regardless of whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, you have to acknowledge the fact that this administration has had uh, an almost constant attack on some of the institutions that we've treasured in this country, that we've relied on this country uh, since its founding. Uh, he has, just as recently as this evening, I think, tweeted out something about a Supreme Court decision, a, a decision that basically was, you know, a split decision in the Supreme Court relating to Pennsylvania and counting of absentee ballots as causing violence in the streets. And it's that sort of attack on our institutions that I think has done significant damage to the confidence that Americans have in the rule of law. Now, whether or not we get through this election without any major uh, legal hiccups or problems, I think that will do a lot to restoring faith in our institutions among the American people. And that is critically important right now. Mike, if, if the Republicans lose the White House and they lose the House and they lose the Senate, do you see the party rebooting by the new year, do you think it will be a very different looking Republican Party uh, if they indeed do lose power? If the Republicans lose the White House and the Senate and continue to lose seats in the uh, House of Representatives, you'll see Democrats ascendant, which is really the point at which political parties start to implode. If Republicans are smart, and frankly, my party hasn't shown a lot of smarts in the last couple of years, um, I, they would wait for the Democrat, various coalitions within the Democrat party to tear that party apart. How far left would they move? How can they hold the moderate uh, center to make some deals maybe with Republicans and get something done? Um, it's always at peak power when uh, political parties begin to decline. Dr. Gillespie, can you compare this to any election in our lifetime? Is 1980 probably a pretty good litmus test when the Republicans really swept into power and they were in power for uh, quite a while as a result of that? If uh, Joe Biden is successful uh, along with Senator Harris tomorrow, is, is this going to be one of those kinds of, of, of landmark elections that sort of changed the course of the ship of America? Um, well, I think that that remains to be seen. Um, there is a theory of transformational presidencies that suggests that the presidents that we usually think about as being the game-changing types of presidents are ones uh, that uh, proceed uh, or that are serve around the times of troubled presidencies. And so I know that there are, you know, many viewers who uh, support some of the policies of the Trump administration, but this has also been a time um, for those of us, you know, who are, I guess, 60 and below of, 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 of real uncertainty and real tension. And so um, there is an opportunity for um, there to be a course correction and, and a sea change. We have to see whether or not that happens tomorrow. Um, and if Joe Biden presides over that, then he will certainly get a lot of credit for it. But that's going to actually have to take a lot of initiative on um, his side. Like, if he's a caretaker president, then this won't be viewed as a transformational moment. Perhaps it would be viewed as a moment where you could try to uh, sort of right the ship and save institutions. Um, but it really is what uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris make of it should they win. Mike, this is really a different looking campaign in the sense that 
you know, Lucy McBath, Karen Handel, we haven't seen much of them. We haven't seen the availability to reporters anymore. We haven't seen David Perdue. We haven't seen a lot of him in, in places uh, where there are reporters. It's a different day now in politics in terms of trying to get out your message. I, I'm not sure playing it entirely by social media and by your own voice is necessarily the way to go. We certainly will be tossing that around uh, after tomorrow. Well, I think so. Part of that is due to the COVID pandemic. Uh, you're, you're not going to shake as many hands. You're not going to knock on as many doors. Um, and you have to also look at President Trump and his rallies. President Trump's rallies are about President Trump. He hasn't reached down the ballot to try to pull up a, a Karen Handel or a David Perdue. Um, he gives shout outs, but they're just sort of shout outs. He doesn't really um, do anything other than try to magnify his own importance, which is a, you know, what a good candidate does, which is what a good salesman does. But a true leader would actually be helping up uh, the down ballot members of his own party who are going to need some help come tomorrow evening. Paige, I have just seconds left. Do you think the Supreme Court is going to have a different look one year from today? How do you think that's going to play out? And I don't have a lot of time left. Sure. Uh, ultimately, I don't think so. I, I think at the end of the day, we're going to be comfortable with the justices that are there. There may be some changes, but I don't think you're going to see the court packed. I don't think you're going to see more than nine justices. Paige, thank you. Dr. Gillespie, as always, thank you. And Mike, we appreciate it. Thanks for being with us tonight uh, during the 8 o'clock hour and here during the 930 hour. Thanks so much. What issues matter the most to you as we head into Election Day? Let us know by texting the number on your screen, 404-885-7600. And check out our resource guide on 11alive.com slash vote. All right, straight ahead. Coming up, the president's response to his supporters calling on him to fire the nation's top infectious disease expert. Can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station.
today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can. On the eve of the presidential election, Americans say their anxiety is growing. 11 Alive's Brittany Kleinpeter spoke with a psychotherapist on steps to protect your mental health. We will soon find out who will be America's next president. Voters say they're worried. Will their vote count? Will their candidate get elected? And should they even have hope? So we don't know if we got to be hopeful or we don't know if we got to be fearful. We're praying for a positive outcome. Nearly 70% of Americans say the presidential election is a major source of stress, according to the American Psychological Association. Mental health expert Ashley Bryant offered these suggestions to cope. To limit TV and social media time, practice being present, Plan a mental health day and stop asking what if. And what I try to remind them is what's happening right here and right now, um, because we're focusing on, well, you know, what if this happens and what if that happens? And so we get in this spiral of what ifs. Another concern post-election, the possibility of civil unrest. Some businesses even boarded up ahead of election day. And I do think it's best to take all safe precautions because of what has happened. Uh, with prior riot. The National Retail Federation has even prepped businesses for the worst with online training sessions to teach businesses how to de-escalate conflict. Atlanta-based retail giant Home Depot released this statement when asked about post-election precautions. We're always evaluating the security needs of all of our locations and actively plan for many situations, including the political environment. Experts say this is really important. It still may be impossible to call winners on election night, so they say develop a plan now to prioritize your mental health in case the election drags on for days to come. President Trump is dropping hints about the future of the nation's top infectious disease expert. During a campaign stop in Florida last night, the crowd started chanting, fire Fauci, referring to Dr. Anthony Fauci. The president replied, let me wait until a little bit after the election, then claimed Fauci has been wrong a lot. Fauci has been has been uh, outspoken recently about the president's handling of the coronavirus pandemic. It's the first day on the job for Supreme Court Justice nominee, or now she is Supreme Court Justice, Amy Coney Barrett. The high court resumed oral arguments today, and Justice Barrett took her place virtually in the ninth seat. Americans can still listen to the arguments in real time thanks to the pandemic as the Supreme Court continues to meet online. Well, we're watching our um, temperatures tonight because they're really falling out there. And I want to just remind you of this uh, freeze warning that we have in effect in far north Georgia for Fannin County, Union and Towns County. But all of the rest of us are in a frost advisory. Take a look at the bigger picture right now. And you can see here what we're talking about with uh, the threats from this being that frost could kill sensitive or outdoor vegetation if it's left uncovered. Um, we don't have the wind around tonight and the temperatures are going to be really chilly. Last night we had the wind and that inhibits the development of frost forming, but tonight we don't have that. And that's why we, we might see some, some frost developing. So here's a look at the required conditions needed for frost to develop. Temperatures near or below freezing, really between 32 to 36, maybe 37 degrees. You need a clear sky and you need calm air out there, really no wind around. And these are the conditions that we have out there for tonight. Temperatures we think by morning will be around 37. So that's on that upper end of that scale of what we need for frost to develop. So that's why we don't think it's going to be widespread. It's just going to be kind of patchy. We do see clear skies. We also are expecting mainly calm uh, conditions out there. Winds could be maybe two to three miles an hour, but not the breezy conditions like we had last night. And I've had people ask me before, if it's only going to be 35 to 37 and it's above freezing, how can we have frost? Well, that's because most thermometers are about four to six feet above the ground. And when you have the clear skies, cool air, you get radiational cooling at the surface, and it could be a little bit cooler than that, where you can see just a few little bit of uh, ice particles developing on some, uh, you know, some grass, you know, blades of grass or on leaves or some flower petals or something like that. So just patchy out there tonight. But if you want to uh, take precautions, if you brought in your you know, potted plants last night, bring them in again. 
or if you put mulch around uh, some of your plants that you want to prolong a little bit longer, you can put some more mulch out there again too. Temperatures right now, it's cold. If you go outside, it's already in the mid 40s here in Atlanta, Duluth, Athens, Marietta, mid 40s, low 40s in Canton and Gainesville. But some areas are already in the 30s, like Peachtree City, LaGrange, also Carrollton in the 30s, right there at 37 degrees. Rome is at 39, uh, Dalton at 37. Uh, so it's going to be really cold out there tonight. We think by morning here in the city, we'll make it down to around 38 to 37, 37 to 38 degrees with clear skies by 8 o'clock. We're back up to around 41 degrees. So here's your election day outlook. Uh, if you're headed to the polls early in the morning when they open at 7, just know that's going to be the coldest part of the day when temperatures are around 38. By lunchtime and after, that's when those temperatures get up into the 60s uh, with plenty of sunshine around. No rain, no excuses not to go out and vote as far as weather is concerned. And then when the polls close at 7 o'clock, we'll have clear skies and temperatures right around 55 degrees. So we're going to go with the 10 on the wasometer tomorrow. The only reason we're not going with an 11 is because of that 37 degree temperature in the morning is still really chilly for this time of year. The afternoons can be feeling pretty good in mid and even some upper 60s in some spots. We do hit 70 on Wednesday near 70 Thursday, and I do think that uh, those morning temperatures will be a little milder, so we're going to go with an 11 on the wasometer for Wednesday and Thursday back to a 10 on Friday with a few more clouds building in 20% chance for a shower Saturday then a 30% chance on Sunday and Monday. All right, thanks, Chris. As COVID-19 cases continue to rise in our state, the impact on racial and ethnic minority groups is very concerning. Levinalize Paula Suro explains why many Latinos in Georgia are struggling to get the necessary help they need. It's a disease that really like destroys your body, and even after you, you recover, your body's never really the same. 25-year-old Pedro Viloria saw this firsthand when his Venezuelan parents, who were in their late 40s and early 50s, and his roommate tested positive for COVID-19. Most Latinos families live very close together, a lot of us in one place, mostly with our elderly. Living in close quarters is one factor the CDC says disproportionately affects Latinos more than other groups. Many Hispanics actually have additional chronic conditions, um, more likely to have diabetes, heart disease, and so on. And that in itself would increase the risk of uh, complications from COVID. Dr. Jose Cordero with the University of Georgia says it also has to do with the fact that a lot of Latinos have low income. They are essential workers, and a lot of them don't have the proper access to health care. There's been a, a great expansion of telehealth, but for that, you need to have the, the communications. You have to have your, your computer, and uh, that's another area where there are limitations for uh, Hispanics in the Atlanta area. In Gwinnett County, where Latinos make up almost 22% of the population, they account for about 29% of COVID-19 cases. We know that, that in Georgia, nearly 20% of pregnant women are not covered. According to the CDC, Latinas are the largest group of pregnant women with COVID-19 in the U.S. Of the almost 35,000 pregnant women the CDC collected data from, 9,636 are Latinas. We've just kind of been really, really afraid. Um, to exist, to go out, to do anything. That fear is what drives Viloria to help his neighbors through the Latino Community Fund. The organization launched a financial assistance program giving $500 to $1,000 to those who have been affected by the virus, who aren't fluent in English, don't receive federal help, or those who are essential workers like many farmers in South Georgia. And we're seeing a very disproportionate effect on these communities. So far, the fund has handed out more than $1 million and plans to continue the work enough for you get even more at 11 alive's youtube channel where you'll find uncut interviews extended body cam footage live streams of atlanta's biggest trials and more subscribe to 11 alive today Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. 
We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. It's another really cold night and cold morning to start. We'll be at 37 in the morning with some patchy frost in some spots. We warm back up into the 60s though with sunshine and then uh, not as cold Wednesday and Thursday morning with temperatures back in the 40s with highs near 70. We'll go with 11s on the wasometer and then low rain chances heading into the weekend. 20% chance Saturday, 30% chance on Sunday and Monday. All right, we got a lot more news coming straight at you with Jeff Hollinger. This is the big 36. Is that how I say it, Jeff? Where news is king. <laughs> viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. 
the things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. Tonight at 10, the final push. President Obama visiting Atlanta hours before the polls open on Election Day. What you can expect when it comes to casting your vote. A man accused of assaulting women after meeting them on a dating app. Now police are wondering if there could be other victims, too. COVID-19 prompting more voters to cast an absentee ballot this election. What counties are doing to keep up with counting and how this may impact when we see results. Tonight, one voter casted her vote in October but found no indication that her vote was recorded. John Sherrick is live in Midtown Atlanta. John, what can voters do if they find that their vote was not recorded? Well, Jeff, there are certain to be long lines at polling places like this one in the morning. But if you voted early and if you're checking online and you're not seeing any record of it, there still may be time to go to your polling place in person in the morning, see if everything's straightened out on the computers there, and then vote for real if necessary. Kenya Edwards tells us she voted in Fulton County three weeks ago in person. Yet Edwards says she can't find any confirmation on the state's online My Voter page that her vote ever recorded, as if she'd never voted at all. I'm frustrated. Um, I did my part as a citizen. I went and I voted. I just want to know that my vote counted. Kenya Edwards says she and her niece voted on October 12th at the Georgia International Convention Center in College Park. She says that her niece's vote recorded later online, but not her own vote. And that she hasn't been able to get anyone yet from Fulton County's elections office to give her any guidance or explanation. You just want your vote counted. Point blank, I want my vote to be counted. All voters can check their records, go online, search for something like Voter Registration Georgia, find your way to the Georgia My Voter link, fill in the boxes, and when the My Voter page comes up with your personal registration info, look for the link on the lower left. It says click here for absentee ballot status, but it's for in-person voting status too. I voted in person, and when I clicked here, it shows that I voted in a special election on September 25th and also in the general election on October 16th. But Kenya Edwards showed me that when she logs in and tries all that, the link she gets is gray, inactive, as if she hadn't voted. Well, I'm not counted, so I'm hoping others will check their status as well, and if not, go vote tomorrow. So Edwards says maybe her vote did record properly, it's just not, not showing up on that portable portal. So that is why she says she's going to go to her polling place in person in the morning, talk with a poll worker there, see if her voting record shows up on that computer. And then she says she'll try to vote for real if necessary. Back to you, Jeff. John Herrick reporting for us. Thank you, John. Fulton County's election director expects to have all of the absentee mail-in ballots. It's received so far counted by tomorrow afternoon on Election Day. We asked Reveal investigator Andy Parati to explain how that process will work. Over the past few weeks, this is where election workers have been processing thousands of absentee ballots in Fulton County. But if you want your vote to count tomorrow, don't put it in the mail. It's too late for that. Instead, drop it off in person. On the eve of the election, Fulton County's election workers process the remaining mail-in absentee ballots on the third floor of the State Farm Arena. Here's how it works. Workers scan each ballot into a computer system, which are saved on hard drives, not connected to the Internet. Then the hard drives are transported three miles away here to the county's election headquarters on English Street. Starting at 7 p.m. tomorrow, the ballots are then uploaded on computers and included into the county's official results. So far in Georgia, 1.2 million people have cast absentee ballots by mail. As of Monday morning, there are 262,000 outstanding ballots not yet returned. Fulton County's election director expects most of its absentee mail-in ballots will be counted early. Any of the ballots that we've scanned probably through 2 p.m. tomorrow, uh, absentee, we'll release those. 
at 7 p.m. Uh, then the, the absentee team will keep working throughout the rest of the day and night to, to keep processing everything. Not all Georgia counties are processing mail-in ballots early. They're not required to. Election workers will be back here tomorrow tabulating absentee ballots it collects today and tomorrow. Its director expects to have them all counted by 2 p.m. tomorrow. Some of you may be voting tomorrow. What should you do if you run into problems? Hope Ford explains advice on what to expect tomorrow when you vote. To not only check the Secretary of State's website, but to double check it with the County Board of Elections website. Insane fought with New Georgia Project says there's been last minute polling location changes, especially in Fulton and Gwinnett counties, some of which are due to power outages from Zeta. Now, if you experience issues with machines or the machines are down for a long time, voters can ask for an alternative method to vote. They have a right to cast a paper ballot that will be automatically counted without them having to do anything more on their end. Should you run into any issues, minor inconveniences to crazy weird stuff that you know should not be happening, report them by calling this number 1-866-OUR-VOTE, the number for the election protection hotline. Literally thousands of lawyers that are manning um, the election protection hotline. Many of them are dedicated to Georgia because Georgia's America's newest battleground state. According to an NBC poll, 79% of registered voters surveyed say they are interested in the election outcome. Investigator Rebecca Lindstrom looks at what else the survey found. That has certainly led people to the polls. The Secretary of State says nearly 4 million people have already voted. That means we only need about 250,000 people to show up on Election Day to break the record for the total number of votes cast in a presidential election. According to the NBC poll, which surveyed voters in 12 potential swing states, that won't be hard to do because 27% say they plan to wait until Election Day to cast their ballot. The swing states listed alongside Georgia are Arizona, Florida, Iowa, Maine, Michigan, Minnesota, North Carolina, New Hampshire, Nevada, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. Of those states, more people in the past month believe our country is headed in the right direction, from 30% to 36% of those surveyed. But the majority of Americans, 57%, still believe we are on the wrong track. While 56% to approve of how President Trump has handled the economy, only 42% approve of how he's handled the coronavirus, and 47% approve of his job performance overall. That's giving Joe Biden a slight advantage in the polls. 51% of those surveyed say they're voting for the former vice president, which is in line with 11 Alive's own Survey USA poll in mid-October. 49% say they also hope Democrats take control of Congress after this election. I do want to note the margin of error on the NBC poll is about 3.5%. And slightly more people surveyed consider themselves strong, moderate Democrats. So if you're already on the edge of your seat, hold on, because all the polls seem to be able to tell us is that this election is going to be close. 11 Alive's voter access team is where you uh, can reach for all the answers you need at the end of this election season. If you experience problems with the polls or you just have a question, you can email us at where ATL speaks at 11alive.com or you can text us directly at 404 885 Seven six zero zero. We have uh, some advisories to talk about tonight. First, a freeze warning in far north Georgia, and then the rest of us are in a frost advisory by tomorrow morning. Stay with us. We'll walk you through those temperatures hour by hour. The anxiety as the clock ticks closer to Election Day. Coming up, we share tips on how to cope with stress. It's there. It's a giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station.
Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. On the eve of the presidential election, Americans say their anxiety is growing. 11 Alive's Brittany Kleinpeter spoke with a psychotherapist who gives us a little bit of Dr. Phil here on the steps to protect your mental health. We will soon find out who will be America's next president. Voters say they're worried. Will their vote count? Will their candidate get elected? And should they even have hope? So we don't know if we got to be hopeful or we don't know if we got to be fearful. Uh, we're praying for a positive outcome. Nearly 70% of Americans say the presidential election is a major source of stress, according to the American Psychological Association. Mental health expert Ashley Bryant offered these suggestions to cope. To limit TV and social media time, practice being present, plan a mental health day, and stop asking what if. And what I try to remind them is what's happening right here and right now, um, because we're focusing on, well, you know, what if this happens and what if that happens and so we get in this spiral of what ifs. Another concern post-election, the possibility of civil unrest. Some businesses even boarded up ahead of election day. And I do think it's best to take all safe precautions because of what has happened uh, with prior riots. The National Retail Federation has even prepped businesses for the worst with online training sessions to teach businesses how to de-escalate conflict. Atlanta-based retail giant Home Depot released this statement when asked about post-election precautions. We're always evaluating the security needs of all of our locations and actively plan for many situations, including the political environment. Experts say it's important to note it still may be impossible to call winners on election night. They say develop a plan now to prioritize your mental health in case the election drags on. But I saw one of the criteria was don't watch TV, watch the Big 36. Watch us, we'll be here for you. All right, let's take a look at some of the other stories making headlines tonight. President Trump dropping hints about the future of the nation's top infectious disease expert. During a campaign stop in Florida last night, the crowd started chanting fire Fauci, referring to Dr. Anthony Fauci. The president replied, let me wait until a little bit after the election, then claimed that Dr. Fauci had been wrong a lot. Dr. Fauci has grown more outspoken recently about the president's handling of the coronavirus pandemic. It is the first day on the job for Supreme Court Justice Amy Coney Barrett. The high court resumed oral arguments today, and Justice Barrett took her place virtually in the ninth seat. Americans can listen to the arguments in real time thanks to the pandemic as the Supreme Court continues to meet online. As President Trump says votes should not be counted after Election Day, an election lawyer warning that while the first Tuesday in November is always the last day to cast a ballot, it's never the last day that votes are counted. And he says uh, a slow count does not mean fraud. Our chief meteorologist Chris Holcomb here with a, a little break from all of the politics. <laughs> like a breath of fresh air and cool air on a hot day. I'm glad you're here. Yeah, and that, that is a cold air breath of fresh air as well because it's, it's very cold out there again tonight too. And for the second night in a row, we're talking about a freeze warning that's in effect. But this freeze warning only is including three counties up in North Georgia. We had a lot more uh, under a freeze warning last night. Now we're just talking about Fannin County, Union and Towns County. It's those areas in North Georgia that could see temperatures around freezing or as low as 28 degrees that could damage or kill some sensitive vegetation. Now, another thing that's different from last night than tonight is we don't have the wind around and the wind often inhibits the development of frost. And since we don't have that wind tonight, 
we do have a chance for some frost to develop. So there is a frost advisory in effect for the rest of us here in all these counties that you see shaded in blue. And again, frost could kill sensitive outdoor vegetation if it is left uncovered. So last night, many of you may have brought some plants in or covered them up uh, with some mulch and stuff. Uh, you may want to do that again tonight because we could have patchy frost around. I don't think it's going to be really widespread, just going to be in patches. This is one of the areas that's in the freeze warning right now. This is a live look up in Blue Ridge. Of course, uh, it's dark up there. We have clear skies. You don't see much happening, but it is cold up in Blue Ridge at this hour, and it's going to be even colder in the morning. Near Blairsville, we're already below freezing at 31 right now. Dalton is 37. We have 38 in Rome. As you get closer to the metro area, we see more of these 40s around but then south and west of the city uh, and a more of a low lying areas here where we have some cool air draining down in these areas south and west of Atlanta. It's cooler 37 in Peachtree City, 36 in Dalton and 38 in LaGrange at this hour. Now here in town, we're in the 40s and it looks like we'll hold in the 40s till around midnight or just after I think by two in the morning. We'll be at 39 degrees and then early in the morning about 37 to 38 for our low temperature around sunrise tomorrow and then we're back up to 41 uh, by about eight o'clock in the morning. So here's your voting day weather outlook. If you're going to go really early in the morning when the polls are opening, that of course is going to be the coldest part of the day when we're around 38 degrees. It will be warming up throughout the morning hours and I think around lunchtime and after is when we'll be in those 60s. And then when the polls close again at seven, remember the sun sets around 543 tomorrow night. Uh, so by seven o'clock, it'll be dark for over an hour. It's going to start cooling down again. We'll get to about 55 at seven o'clock tonight. So that'll maybe kind of help you plan your day a little bit. We're going to go with the 10 on the wasometer tomorrow. This is our scale from one to 11, where an 11 is a perfect day. Not quite perfect because of this. These temperatures in the morning are just so cold, colder than average. That wouldn't be perfect there. Afternoon temperatures are going to be pretty nice. And folks, let me tell you, we've got a major system that we're watching down here in the Caribbean. This is almost a category five storm. This is Hurricane Ada. Just look at that eye here that's nearing the coast of Nicaragua. We think we'll have landfall early tomorrow morning, most likely as a category five storm early in the morning. And then it moves inland, loses strength. But I want you to notice here as it moves inland, you see it becoming an area of low pressure. Well, it's not finished yet. It's going to curve back into the Caribbean, becoming a tropical storm again uh, by Saturday in the middle of the Caribbean. And after that, all the models are just all over the place with this. It is too early to tell where it's going to go. If you're seeing people posting on social media, different model scenarios, I'm just going to tell you, it's too early to tell you where it's going to go. We just don't know yet, so we'll keep you posted on that. Uh, a pretty nice day tomorrow, even nicer Wednesday and Thursday. Milder mornings in the 40s with highs near 70, plenty of sunshine. A few more clouds Friday, then a low rain chance Saturday at 20%, 30% chance on Sunday and Monday. Here's today a look at your weather wow moment. You know, last night I got a lot of messages, people saying they saw this bright white light streaking across the sky. Well, Joshua Walls checked his uh, doorbell camera and actually captured it there from Cartersville looking toward the west. This was actually a fragment from an asteroid that hit our atmosphere and broke up and caused that fireball to streak across the sky. Thanks, Joshua, for sharing that with us. We would love to see your weather well moment. We get them a lot of times from our 11 Alive Community Storm Trackers. You can be one by searching 11 Alive Storm Trackers on Facebook. Ask to become a member and we'll let you into this exclusive local weather community. It is an exclusive group indeed. We know that to be true. Thank you very much. We enjoy all of their pictures and we look forward to them. We are getting a closer look at the ways that COVID is impacting school aged children in our state right now. We're seeing an increase among children 5 to 17 cases up 12% from last week. Those students now account for more than 27,000 cases in Georgia. The highest concentration is in Gwinnett County, which accounts for 10% of that total. We're also seeing a 14% increase in cases of younger children. Newborns to four years of age now have more than 5,300 cases in the state. The highest concentration for the age bracket is also in Gwinnett County. Almost 800,000 audition Let's try that again. Almost 800 audition tapes. <laughs> we'll take a look at the ASO's latest project. It's a great one, but not that great. All right. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. 
continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear, on 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical. Sadly, with the symphony halls empty and concerts on hold, the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra has got to find a way to take its music somewhere else, and they have done so to the internet and outdoors. Its newest effort is to bring music into people's lives. It's called the Great Atlanta Play Along. Bill Liss and Stephen Boise, his tag team partner, show us what it's all about. When we think of great moments in Atlanta, we think Olympics. And we can remember one of the most recognizable themes, Ode to Joy. It was taken from Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. And that memory sparked an idea with the Atlanta Symphony. Tap into the musical talent in the community. And that's exactly what the orchestra did. They got the word out and asked for audition tapes to put together a special video montage performing Ode to Joy. Whatever instrument you can play, it's, it counts and you should send it in. We, at one point, we were thinking maybe if we got 30 to 50, we were like, that would be something we could work with. <laughs> But the word spread like wildfire. And before long, KC Commander, who heads the orchestra's digital content, was in for quite a surprise. We did not think we were gonna get past 100 or 200, let alone almost 800. Whether you were a beginner, uh, intermediate, or if you were a pro, you could still be a part of the project. And Jerry Ho, the ASO's assistant conductor and music director of the youth orchestra, the project reaffirmed his belief in the power of music, especially during this pandemic. Music is a unifier. It's something that brings us all together. And it is time that it's so hard to make connections simply because of all the distancing and all the technology that we're having to use to keep everyone safe. We can use music as a way to bring everyone together. And the proof of that was in the 780 audition tapes that flooded the symphony. There were no barriers on skill levels or instruments played. And the variety went all the way from traditional to inventive. And there's eight-year-old Abby Winger, who's been playing violin since she's been four years old. Now, I like to just play at home, and sometimes, um, I go to my um, t my violin teacher.
And there'll be bows all around when the video is presented on the Atlanta Symphony website between Thanksgiving and Christmas. But if you didn't make the final cut, no worries. The Atlanta Symphony plans to do a series of videos in 2021, which will show many of the 780 people who sent in the audition tapes. All that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters. The final push, both presidential candidates spent the last hours of campaigning on the move, visiting potential swing states. Last night, both President Trump and Democratic Vice Presidential nominee Senator Kamala Harris from California were in Georgia. The women of the suburbs, please vote for President Trump. So when do you see what's going to happen with the great red wave? More than 90 million voters have already cast their ballots around America. And tonight we're joined by political analysts to help us break everything down. And we appreciate uh, GOP analyst Mike Hassinger being there. Political science professor Dr. Andre Gillespie and constitutional attorney Paige Pate. Guys, we really appreciate your time tonight as you have joined us here on uh, the Big 36. Dr. Gillespie, here we are on the eve of all of this. As you sit, as you read, as you think, as you watch, 
Tell us what's running through your mind tonight about what tomorrow may bring. Um, there's lots running through my head. So, you know, I am interested in seeing what the final result of the election is. Um, I want to see what the margins actually look like here in Georgia. Um, I want to see who turns out on Election Day um, um, and whether or not we're going to see any surprises. So not just um, in the blue wall states of uh, the upper uh, Midwest, but also looking here in the south and then uh, going west towards the Sun Belt as well to see whether or not uh, we see any differences in the 2016 vote. So whether states flip from red to blue or blue to red. Um, here in Georgia, I, you know, I care about what's going to happen in the state legislative races. Um, I think, you know, it's going to be really interesting to see whether or not uh, one or both Senate races go to a runoff. Um, and, of course, we're also going to be paying attention to the 6th and the 7th District as well. Mike, I'm taking a look tonight at the Rasmussen poll um, is showing that uh, the president is trailing Joe Biden now by uh, about eight percentage points right now. G give me your view of of polls, and I know those Republicans and those who have voted for Donald Trump point back to 2016 that said that, you know, he had no shot of winning four years ago, and look what happened. Is there a correlation between tonight and 2016? And I guess the second part of that question is, can history repeat itself? Well, uh, I, history is probably not going to repeat itself, but sometimes it does rhyme. The 2016 polls were wrong in the sense that they undersampled non-college educated white voters who turned out in much, much greater numbers than any pollster had predicted using any of their models. Um, they've spent four years correcting that problem and they're not likely to be wrong again for the same reason. But you are seeing the Trump campaign uh, run the exact same plays that they, in 2020, that they ran in 2016, and you are seeing the same sort of tightening of the polls right here at the very end that you did see in 2016. As I've said before, I, I don't think polls should be predictive in nature um, because there's too much room for things to go wrong. They are probabilistic, and as human beings, we're, we're terrible at evaluating risk. So um, we have to kind of assign a, a likelihood factor. I think Donald Trump's got a one in four chance of repeating exactly the same, winning exactly the same states he won in 2016 uh, to win again in 2020, but only one in four. Paige, Paige, let's talk about the legal challenges that may be ahead. And I think that is of concern for both parties at this point. I mean, if this race is close, there will be so many challenges political, uh, legally uh, to the validity of, of this election that I think it will be hard for a lot of people to understand all of these, these sort of uh, these legal ramifications that become very complex. Right, it's going to be like 2000 on steroids because we've already seen numerous legal challenges to simply the way uh, we're receiving absentee ballots, the way they've been sent out, uh, the way the registration process is run. Georgia changed a lot of its election code just last year and so we're facing a new election in this state with a lot of different rules, a lot of different procedures. So the first thing I'm going to be looking at is will it work? Uh, will the machines be turned on? Will the votes be counted? Will people be able to go to the polling place and vote without fear or intimidation? And then we start counting the votes. And there are so many potential legal problems, challenges to absentee ballots, especially if it's close in a few states. We could see this process play out not just days from now, but weeks from now. Paige, how, how about how the U.S. Supreme Court gets involved? Well, it looks like we're having some problems with Paige. Technically, we will come back to him. Dr. Gillespie, are you, let me take a look at you here and see if we're having trouble with you. Are you, can you hear me? I can hear you. It looks like everybody's freezing up, but let, let's try it, Dr. Gillespie. Let's give it a, a shot here. How do you think Georgia goes this election cycle? Do you think this is finally um, the time when the state does flip blue and that John Ossoff and, and Reverend Warnock will do very, very well tomorrow along with those running for Congress, whether it's Carolyn Bordeaux or Lucy McBath? So I, I can't say with certainty. Um, you know, I don't think it would be far-fetched uh, to see Carolyn Bordeaux pick up 
um, the seat that she lost uh, by less than 1,000 votes in 2018. Um, I think sort of the big uh, bellwether for whether or not Georgia, uh, you know, is truly a purple state is that moment when, and I think it's a win moment, not an if moment, uh, we see a Democrat win a statewide election. It could happen tomorrow. It may not. If it doesn't happen tomorrow, the margins are still going to be more narrow than they were in 2016, which would suggest that Georgia is becoming increasingly competitive and that Democrats have figured out a way to identify and mobilize voters such that they can be competitive in elections. And I think that that's an important sign and a recognition that races are no longer going to be decided by double-digit margins for uh, the foreseeable future. Mike, we've seen a lot of money fall into this race, a lot of money from outside political action committees. I mean, if, if you watch television at all, you've seen me on the attack video uh, that's going against David Perdue. Nothing we can do about that in local news. They can use our images any way that they so choose. But the amount of money that has come into this race is something that certainly has changed the dynamic of the campaign. Uh, yeah, I think it's increased the amount of advertising and the constant nature of it, whether it's online, digital advertising, uh, getting texts on your phones, the barrage of ads on television. Um, you're seeing a lot of voter fatigue. Um, it may be encouraging people to vote early because uh, if they're smart campaigns will take people who have already voted off their lists of people to contact. Um, the it, it is like any other advertising campaign, um, cola wars or whatever you want to call it, it's just the, uh, there's a date certain that it ends and that election day deadline uh, brings an intensity to the um, advertising in volume, in technique and in tone. And uh, I don't think the uh, Ossoff campaign, I believe, who, who was using your image, did themselves any favors with that ad. Well, it hasn't done me any favors either. I've gotten a lot of emails and a lot of messages as well, but that's just uh, <laughs> how it goes. Uh, Paige, we're gonna, we appreciate you being with us. We have lost your signal, but we really appreciate all of your political insight tonight from the legal standpoint. Dr. Gillespie, look into your crystal ball. What, what do you think that two nights from this evening we're going to be talking about? How, how do you think it plays out? I'm sorry to put you on the spot like that, but that's kind of how I make my living. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I may hedge a little bit on some of, of that, but um, two nights from now, we may have a pretty good idea of who uh, the next president is going to be. Um, you know, we might even know with somewhat certainty sort of, you know, whether or not President Trump holds onto a seat or whether or not Joe Biden is going to be the next president. Um, I think suffice to say, uh, Joe Biden is going to win the popular vote. I think the big question is, what does the state-to-state -state breakdown look like in terms of the Electoral College? Um, and I think that it's also probably pretty certain that what, whoever wins in Georgia, they're going to win by a margin of less than five percentage points and probably considerably less than five percentage points. Mike, I've got about 30 seconds left. Give me some final thoughts as we cruise into tomorrow. Well, if you see uh, Florida being called early and being called for Biden, you can go to bed because uh, it's over. Biden's the president. The uh, uh, Trump must have Florida to win. Uh, I think in Georgia, you're going to see races that are so close, you'll see a lot of recounts that are mandated by law and part of the process. Uh, I think the turnout means that everyone needs to take a deep breath and wait for the voters uh, votes to be counted, and we'll all need a good deal of patience tomorrow night. All right. Thank you, Mike. And Dr. Gillespie, thank you very much as well. Paige Pate, thank you also for being with us tonight during uh, three half hours of our broadcast this evening on the Big 36. We appreciate it. And we certainly will see you tomorrow night with your uh, political expertise, analysis, observations, witticisms, and musings. DeKalb County Police believe that they have arrested a man who used a dating app to attack women while they think there could be even more victims. That story coming up. Chris? We are watching not only what we have going on here in the metro area with really cold air in place, but also down in the Caribbean with a catastrophic storm that is developing there. Landfall tomorrow, maybe as a category five impacting Central America. I'll show you the latest track. Committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. 
There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association. With Democrats John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock watching from backstage, former President Obama took note of the rare chance to flip two U.S. Senate seats from Republican to Democrat. You've got the chance to flip two Senate seats? I said, well, I got to go. Obama spoke in a parking lot outside the stadium formerly known as Turner Field. At an event, Democrats opted not to publicize much to hold down the size of the crowd. Yet the area in front of the stage filled up with Democratic insiders anxious to get close to the former president who slammed Republican Senators Kelly Loeffler and David Perdue. To make sure their portfolios were protected instead of making sure you were protected, man, that's shady. Much of the crowd stuck to the drive-in format of the event, waving signs, honking horns, and hoping the message might get out to folks on the fence about voting Tuesday. Even with the restrictions, Ossoff said it can only help him. Having President Obama here is a huge boost, and his encouragement to get out and vote tomorrow is what everybody needs to hear. The answer is not to stay home, it's to turn out like never before. President Obama did not mention the Democrats running in close congressional races in the 6th and 7th congressional districts. 
We have heard from many voters concerned about delays receiving their mail-in ballots. If you applied for an absentee ballot but did not already mail it in, you need to drop it off in one of the official drop boxes in your county. Check with your local election office for locations. It's too late to try to mail it in at this point to make the deadline, and if you did not receive your absentee ballot, you may still be able to vote in person by canceling your ballot. you find more information on our website, 11alive.com or the 11alive app. Check the special voter resources section. All right, let's take a look at some of the other top headlines that we are following around Metro Atlanta. DeKalb County says that uh, a man accused of raping at least five women is now off the streets. 18-year-old Demetrius Rome was arrested in connection to five rapes. Officers say three of the attacks occurred last month at the Brook Apartments on Shalliford Road. He's accused of luring victims through social media. Investigators say that more attacks could have happened at other complexes along Shalliford Road and I-85. They're asking any other potential victims to please come forward. Days after Zeta moved through our area, about 1,000 Georgia Power customers are still without electricity. Crews have worked around the clock to restore power for more than 800,000 people. Georgia Power says the damage is similar to what we saw after Hurricane Michael in 2018, with more than 700 poles broken and 250 transformers were damaged. Kruger Atlanta Division now is looking to fill more than 800 positions ahead of the holiday. Saturday, Kroger will hold a one-day job fair. If you're interested, we have a link to the application on 11alive.com. Then on Saturday from 11 a.m. until 4 p.m., you can head on over to the store at which you'd like to work. Appointments are not necessary. Stores involved in the hiring are in Georgia, South Carolina, and Alabama. We had really chilly air out there today. Started off this morning with temperatures into the 30s at 38 degrees this morning. You know, this time of year, we're supposed to be waking up just below 50 at 49. So we were about 11 degrees below average this morning. We were also below average this afternoon too, about nine degrees below average. When we hit 59 degrees, we should be around 68 this time of year. So it was a really chilly day and tomorrow it's going to be cold again in the morning, but then warming up just a little bit more once we head into the afternoon. I do think we'll be in the 60s tomorrow. Hey, take a look at this. You know, we didn't have any rain today, of course, with all the clear skies and blue sky and sunshine out there, but that surplus is almost 20 inches above where we should be in rainfall for the year. Take a look at your weather headlines. We're going to continue with chilly nights and mornings. Um, and then in the afternoons, we're going to have more of that warming around. We also have a frost advisory in effect for the overnight hours tonight with the chilly air overnight and calm air, no wind around and clear skies. That is the conditions. Th those are the conditions needed for the potential for frost to develop. So just keep an eye on that for in the morning hours. Don't think it's going to be widespread, but just kind of patchy in some spots. Now I want to spend a little time on this storm. This is Hurricane Ada. It is nearing the coast of Nicaragua right now, and this is a major hurricane is a category four. It is most likely going to get even stronger overnight and become a category five before landfall. This is the coast of Nicaragua right here. Just look at that very tight, well-defined eye. The smaller that eye is, is really the stronger that it is. When it's a really big eye, it's usually kind of tattered and not quite as strong, but that's a really uh, tight, well-defined eye right there. And here's a look at the latest track we have based on the 10 p.m. advisory that has come out from the Hurricane Center. Category five, most likely tomorrow morning at landfall there along the coast of Nicaragua. Then it moves inland and loses some strength. Now, I know a lot of times we're like, okay, it's a remnant low over land. It's going to die out, right? That's not the case with this storm. It's going to curve back out over water, become a tropical storm again by this weekend out in the uh, Caribbean. And it doesn't really have a lot of steering currents with it. So it may meander and hang out here in the Caribbean. If I was in Jamaica or in the Cayman Islands, I'd be really keeping a close eye on this system and even up into Cuba. Here's a look at the spaghetti model plots and these are all over the place. Um, after it moves out back out of the Caribbean, some are showing it moving over Cuba into the Atlantic. Some show it curving again, going back out into the Gulf of Mexico. So if you're seeing any posts from people saying, hey, this is going to be making landfall in two weeks in this certain area, 
I, I'm going to be honest with you, we don't know yet. The, the models are really having a hard time on where this is going to go. So just know that after this kind of stays over land for a little while and goes back out in the Caribbean, we'll be able to fine tune more about on where it's headed and whether or not it would have any potential impacts on us. So we're going to be talking about ADA for a long time here. But this week, nice and quiet, very dry out there, nice election day weather. It's going to be chilly if you get out really early in the morning to vote, though. Then we get up into the 60s in the afternoon, 70 degrees for high Wednesday, near 70 on Thursday, and temperatures cool in the mornings, but just not as chilly. So we're going to go with 11s on the wisometer for Wednesday and Thursday, a 10 Friday with a few more clouds, and then a 20% chance for showers Saturday, 30% chance on Sunday and Monday, but temperatures through the weekend and beginning of next week into the lower 70s. Braves first baseman Freddie Freeman has been named a finalist for the MVP in the National League. Oh, come on, he is the MVP. Give me a break. November 12th, he will find out if he will become the first Braves player to win since Chipper Jones did 21 years ago in 1999. Dodgers right fielder Mookie Betts, Padres third baseman Manny Machado are the other final finalists. But uh, look, this is Freeman's. Come on. All right. How is Georgia going to slow down Florida's prolific offense? That is a problem Kirby Smart is going to have to figure out this week. It becomes even more problematic when you consider UGA will be doing it without a number of key defenders who are banged up. I don't know how it's going to affect things because a lot of it depends on you know, what we're having to defend. Uh, with Florida, they've got a very uh, versatile attack. You know, they can be uh, many forms of offense uh, in terms of vertical passing game, screen passing game, Darius Tony run game. They got good backs, thick, heavy backs that run the botch and a big offensive line to do it with. Following the brawl in Saturday's Florida Missouri game, the SEC announced punishments. Florida head coach Dan Mullen, almost 50, gets a reprimand for fighting. He was fined $25,000. That's nothing. He annually makes 6.1 million that we know of, so 25 grand is, I mean, that's lunch money for goodness sakes. Gators defensive lineman Zach Carter and linebacker Antoine Powell will be suspended for the first half of Saturday's game in Jacksonville. They had to do that with Mullen, first half suspension. SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey released a statement in part which read, and it is high-minded here, running onto the field to confront a game official, a gathering of teams in an on-field confrontation, and student-athletes throwing punches are all disappointing at any time, but even more so as we work to support healthy competition during the pandemic, end quote. All right. Former UGA receiver Javon Wims of the Bears, been suspended for a couple of games after punching Saints defensive back Chauncey Gardner-Johnson in the helmet. Wim's now eligible to return to the active roster after the Bears' Week 10 game against the Vikings. The NFL trade deadline, 4 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. What happens? Anything? Falcons defensive end, Tack McKinley, is one of the players the Falcons are rumored to be shopping. But Tack today took to Twitter to clear the air. He tweeted that the Falcons are not trading him and they have declined a handful of offers. After their win on Thursday, the Falcons got a few extra days to rest over the weekend. Now they get set and ready to take on Drew Locke and the Denver Broncos. Falcons defense is coming off its strongest performance of the year, and they are looking to keep that momentum going against Locke. It's going to be interesting, and it's going to be a good matchup. Um, the kid, he looks like he has fun, and he's throwing the ball well, so it's going to be a, a good matchup. Yeah, Drew Locke looks like a pretty good player, doesn't he? Denver has been searching for a quarterback for a while. We'll see if he's the guy. We'll take a break. We're back right after this. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. 
Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. Really cold air overnight and in the morning. We're down to about uh, 37 in the morning here in town. Some frost could be developing in some spots. Then we warm up into the 60s in the afternoon with plenty of sunshine around. Uh, we warm up to around 70 Wednesday and Thursday, and the mornings aren't going to be as cold, so we'll go with 11s on the wisometer. A little more moisture coming in for the weekend, only a 20% chance for a shower Saturday, 30% chance Sunday and Monday. All right, Chris, thank you, and thank you for watching. Tomorrow is the big day, and we got you covered right here on the Big 36, as well as on 11 Alive. So tomorrow is the day, and we will be looking for you tomorrow night. All of our coverage beginning with the morning team at 4.30 when Chesley is here causing trouble, good trouble. Though. All right, have a good night. Virus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. 
on 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks.